Welcome back to the O Show, guys. We are presented by TickPick. You ever use TickPick.com? What? I don't know what TickPick is. You know what StubHub is? Ticketmaster? Oh, yeah. So it's a ticket website. Oh. Except this ticket website has no hidden fees. Oh. Which is like legitimate. Like if you wanted to go to a Suns game and you had courtside seats for like $300, $400. Like let's say it's like 432 It's legitimately $432. Like no joke, no taxes, no hidden fees, no service fees, not, none of that. It's like an airline commercial. No hidden it's f- baggage awesome. fees. Exactly, like, I right? don't like those hidden fees. Right. Yes. Like I've, I've gotten tickets from StubHub and let's say it's like a $320 ticket when I go to check out. There's like an additional 150 in adding on fees. Like That's the more expensive it is, not it's, fair. it's not fair at all. And waste your time, right? Because you're here, you're looking and you're like, okay, this is the one I'm going to get. And then they go and, because it's in your price range, it's your budget. And then the, the hidden fee, then you get to that. And you're like, wait a minute, I just wasted my time because... I, that's just wrong. Yeah, I don't like it. That's why we use TickPick.com, ladies and gentlemen. Tick use the promo com. code OSHO20. Get $20 off your next ticket. Tina Morley in studio. Dot, thank you. I'm so excited. I'm going to look up <laughs> TickPick.com and tell my son about that. You should. Yeah, does Max you. go to a lot of games? You know, when he does, I typically take him. We go to, but I mean, I don't go through like a site like that to get tickets. I just know some people. I understand. <laughs> so, but uh, we do go together a lot. We enjoy that. That's when he's fun. in town, he's not in town, you know. So, I was kind of looking, is he in New Hampshire for school? So Brewster Academy um, recruited him to play um, basketball. Yeah. And um, actually it's a really cool story. So he wasn't sure if he wanted to do that. Well, Max like tore his ACL, MCL meniscus uh, going no. up for a dunk sophomore year. So a lot of offers came off the table. It was kind of hard for him. Yeah. And um, praise God he came back great, but then COVID hit. Well, I ran into Robert Sarver and Larry Fitzgerald one day. I was having lunch and I just love them. I think they're both great. And um, they asked about Max, and I told them, you know, what happened. Larry kind of knew, and he said, you know, Tina, he should go to Oakhurst and play at Oakhurst for a year. He said, you know, Max is a lot like me with his mind, and um, I I went to Oakhurst as a post-grad, and it was great for me. And I said, well, oh, my God, that's, like, amazing for football. I said, you know, well, it's interesting. Brewster's recruiting Max for basketball, and he's like, well, that's, like, the number one for basketball, the way Oakhurst is, like, number one for football. He goes, let me talk to him. I really want to mentor him into going to Brewster. It will really expand his mindset and help him grow as a man. And um, so then Max, you know, got in touch and he decided to go to Brewster. And it really was incredible for Max. He has grown um, in such a way that like his maturity level is just expanded and a brotherhood out there um, grew so a strong and it's something like I think Max needed growing up around me and the three girls, right, you know, right, so, right. Um, incredible. So now he's playing. So they had a few offers to play basketball, but I kind of convinced him one night he was trying to decide where to play. And I said, you know, Max, I think it's kind of cool that Central Michigan wants you to play. I said, that's kind of like, why wouldn't you do that? Your dad play there and just carry on kind of a legacy. And um, they have a great coach, Tony Barbie. Mm-hmm. Um, incredible guy. Coach Smoke's amazing too, actually. Really great, great. They're all amazing. I mean, just really positive mindsets. So Max is there. He loves it. The brotherhood there on that team is incredible. Um, he said, Mom, some of the greatest men I've met in my life. He said, I'm still young, but pretty awesome individuals on the team. So what an experience. It's amazing how fast you can grow spiritually and like individually when you're surrounded by the right people. It's, and you don't really realize it until you months. are surrounded by those specific people. You're like, holy crap. Like I really like even people, like I've had people in my life that I've absolutely loved, like friendships that I've absolutely loved and still keep in touch to this day. But I know I need my distance Yes, because those people are either draining or they're just not making you the best version of yourself. Amen. And yes. it's so difficult to kind of like step away finally and be like, man, I love you, but you're gotta, not what's best for me. Yeah. You got to do, you got to spread your wings and fly. Cause you know, you have different values or maybe just different, um, goals and they don't. Yeah. And it is, it's really true that you are like the, uh, five people you spend most of your time with. So I, I'm a firm believer in that. How was the uh, vacation this past week? Yeah, I took you the guys whole family. Went to Mexico? <laughs> yeah, we went to Cabo. We stayed at a place called El Dorado. Um, it's a great uh, club. It's actually um, a really good friend of mine's house. He owns a Discovery Land company and he did Casamigos Tequila. With, oh, really? Yeah, Randy and uh, George Clooney. So he's a really great guy and um, we used his home and. Um, it was amazing. We like bonded. My parents came and. Uh, it was really just uh, good because the kids are all older yeah. and everybody lives everywhere. And I said, guys, we've got to all get together. So what can we do? And Max had just came home from Michigan because he had to be there all summer to train. And the girls are all over the place. So we all just kind of 
met in Cabo. Yeah. Some came from back east. Some came from the south. Oh, it was great. We had so much fun. We uh, celebrated Max's birthday there as well. Oh, well, that's so fun. Great. Yeah, yeah. So how how Max is the youngest? Yeah, he's right? the youngest. So I've got he's... Madison's the oldest. She's in San Francisco. I've got Mackenzie modeling in L.A. And then I've got Mia. Um, she wants to be a teacher, but she's majoring in business at Ole Miss. And then I've got Max. So, so they're I'm an all, empty nester. They're all over the place. Yeah, too. they're all. That's what I'm saying. They're like that's, everywhere. That's awesome. It is. It is, and it's kind of cool now because it's like I downsized, got a smaller house. I'm like, yes, I don't have the water bill and this big lawn in Arcadia anymore. Um, but also, it's kind of cool because now. Like our time together is really special. And I kind of feel like we're just gonna do family reunions. I mean, we'll see each other. It's gonna be harder with the holidays and Max playing basketball because yeah. he can't come home. Right. But that's kind of the way we're gonna roll is like really cool family trips. That's really cool. Like I, I lived with so I lived with five women last year in a house. Oh my gosh. Close, like they're like sisters to me. That's so cute. Which is nice. That's why you're so easy to talk to. But the, I know. I'm really good with women. But, oh boy! <laughs> but, what, does he, um, what does he mean by that? No, I'm just but kidding. I'm just I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Um, I'm probably closer with them now that I'm not living with them than when I was when I was. Because as fun as it was, I'm like I don't have any time to myself. Where like now I'm I'm by myself now in an apartment. I'm like I'm spending way more valuable time with friends than I did when I was around them twenty four seven. Of course. And granted, like it's not the same thing as talking about your kids because they're your kids and they're your pride and joy. Uh, but, but it's still, it's still like you need another your, human your and a different mindset and different energy. Like you need your space. Yeah. Oh <laughs> yeah. God. Yeah. And how old is Max? He had 20. He just turned 20. Just turned, yeah. So yeah, he's, and then, so he's in, he's back East. He's in Michigan. Michigan. East. Mackenzie's in LA, but she was in Rhode Island with her boyfriend. When she okay. met us in Cabo, she, she flew all the way down from Rhode Island. Really? That was a long, that was a long day for her. Jeez. I'm originally from Jersey. Oh, so my God. So I have two siblings. One lives in Boston. One lives in Nashville. So we all left home, too. Oh, my God. Okay, so Mackenzie's boyfriend, um, they just were looking in Boston at some houses. He went to Harvard uh, to get his MBA. So he loves that whole area. Mm -hmm. He's really into education. He loves back east. And she likes Nashville. So they're kind of looking a around a little bit. Because I don't know if they're going to stay in L.A. If, if they end up together to have kids. I think they'd like to be somewhere else. L.A. is kind of crazy for that environment. It can be tough. It can be tough. It's a cool town. Like, I love being there because I love, like, there's a place called Erewhon. It's, like, the best grocery store ever. Because, <laughs> like, they have all this healthy, organic stuff. Yeah. It all tastes really good. And um, so I'm a big fan of grocery stores because, I guess, having four kids, you get used to being at the grocery store all the time. Yeah. So, um and I love like the restaurants and the shopping and some of the vibe, but it's tough. Like you got to be careful raising kids like in Beverly Hill. I mean, anywhere really, you've got to work hard to raise kids to be, you know, a little bit more humble and not get caught up in social media or not get caught up in looks on the outward, you know, it's hard. It's hard. How, how many different uh, cities did you guys live in growing up? Like did, did they move around a lot as kids or were you guys stuck in one you guys no we were pretty much so dan was playing with the suns and then pretty much miami and then back to the suns okay so not that mm -mm, much moving not that's much. pretty similar weather too yeah Minus yeah humidity, i did know? like living in miami though yeah i did i really thought it was kind of good for our marriage too it was just like a change of scenery a little it was bit. just kind of away from you know um distractions and and things that are like you were talking about certain people that you hang out with that aren't yeah good. yeah 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 that yeah. was the, because I did listen to your interview um, with John Jay as well as Rich about talking about Soul of a Woman, inspired to write it like 25 years ago. Yeah, I was pregnant with Mackenzie. I was Jeez. out with Dan that night. Yeah, I was so, out with Dan and Bobby Sura. Do you remember Bobby Sura? I played do, us? I do. We're good friends actually till like, till like today. I mean, we talk all the time, like he texted me this morning. He's a good guy. Oh man. And it was, um, what one of the, one of the players was walking in with a different woman. Yeah, he that's... was. It was a guy from the Cleveland. So we went, we played in Cleveland for one year yeah. between Phoenix and Miami. And it was a guy, um, yeah, like he literally walked in with a really beautiful girl, but mm -hmm. it wasn't his wife. And I was young, you know, I still never saw any of that. You hear it, but it really affected me. And I really actually wasn't even friends with her. I mean, I didn't dislike her, but we didn't really vibe. Yeah. Um, but I kind of had her back still. Like, I made sure she Absolutely. found out. <laughs> so, yeah. That was like the hint of like, oh, like we see the brotherhood here. Like That's with, what I said. Not oh, so only you like listened, teammates, yeah. brothers, just friends, colleagues. It was just different. Yeah, right? and it's fine. I said, you know, Dan, it's crazy. Like, 
you guys have a great brotherhood and whatever the rules or however you run that deal, y'all do it. It's good for you guys. And that's a good thing. It should be like, that's good, you know, but we are lacking a sisterhood clearly. And women need to stick together more on a better level because seeing that woman so happy with such a, uh, in such a situation that is actually so unhealthy and not good for her or him or his children or his wife, um, to me meant that she was lacking something. I'm not worried about him. I'm focusing on her right now. You know what I mean? Because of a sisterhood. And so that's where I felt like I wanted to write a book. And I actually wanted it to be mostly focused on sisterhood. But then I realized throughout the years as I would write and write and take lessons in writing that it was more than sisterhood. It's more about yourself. Mm -hmm. And that's why I call it the soul of a woman because you, I sort of, you know, I, I kind of think of the soul of a woman as this little circle, you know, and you kind of, you know, like a pie, you know, and you kind of separate it out into 14 chapters and three sections. And that's what I did with the book. And because I feel like you really can't be good to other people, even as a mother, as a wife, as a partner, as a friend, until you understand what being more like good to yourself and also um, understanding the good life and living the good life. Isn't it kind of weird how people look at that as like a selfish thing? Like, oh, you only care about yourself. But it's like, if you're not well, you're not going to spread wellness across the board to everybody else that you're surrounding yourself with. 100%. There's a difference between um, self-love and sort of like being like crazy in love with yourself to a point where your ego is taking over. And I talk about that in my book as well. The very first chapter is, is called The Soul Child. And it's all about the inner warfare between the ego and sort of God. And it's like the soul child versus the inner child. And it's really important. Like you have to dig deep and start there. Listen, I wrote the book and I'm still a work in progress. And some people want to think, oh, Tina, she, you know, she thinks she knows it all. No, I don't. Yeah. And I don't want to know it. I'm a work in progress my whole life, but it's life's hard. But the more you can go introspective, like the more you can like resolve things in your life, get rid of the triggers, get rid of everything and start cultivating like a better relationship with yourself and others. You know what I mean? How many things have you looked at in perspective of the last few years that you wish you could have put in the book that you look at now? <sighs> Nothing yet right now, because I, I feel like I covered a lot. Wow, it's pretty concrete then. Well, you know, there's a lot in there, but it's yeah. very deep. And the reason I say that is because I mean, I'm thinking about doing another book, but it would be different. Mm -hmm. um, I think that one's okay. I think we're good. Like, I don't regret leaving out anything. I It was a lot longer. <laughs> and my publisher was like, this is so funny. I'm so bad with computers. So I was like mm -hmm. writing it on Microsoft Word. So every time I would write, you know, it took me forever to write it. But I would look at it and go, oh my gosh, this needs to be longer. This isn't long enough. Well, on Microsoft Word, it's not like the pages of a book. So it came out really long. And so I realized that I could cut a lot of things out. And so there's some things that I cut out that um, I'm really into, um, for example, like I cut out um, information on, it was in this whole beautiful chapter, um, more things about like my eating and my vitamins and things like that. But that could be a whole nother, like a whole other book, you oh, know? Yeah. So I'm okay with that. And that's, those were the things that I was worried about, but I'm actually comfortable with it because I can always just do another book. And it would be completely different. It'd be totally different. Like, I would like to write a book with a guy one day. Like, if I get remarried, I have a whole um, idea for a men's book, but mm -hmm. I'd like to do it with that person. Um, and that would be kind of like the soul of a woman, but more for men. But it wouldn't be deep and introspective because men are kind of more concrete. So it would kind of be like, At least on the surface, you know? Yeah. I mean, they like depth, but I think they take information in differently. I think the way you guys are wired, it's just different. Why is he snickering? <laughs> I thought he was just snickering. Do you think it's that. true or no? Uh, I guess it all depends on the man. I guess it does. Depend. Yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm, absolutely. I'm more, I'm more comfortable with women than with men just because I was raised by my mom. Oh, it's so cute. Life. So I'm more, I'm more in tune with the emotional side. When oh, it's really cute. So I can't really compare with a lot of men Okay. Because men tend to be more, like, yes. I'm, like oh, if I express express my feelings, I'm weak. So um, but I'm, I'm the complete opposite. So. See, I would be writing about all of that, but I would put yeah. it in a more concrete versus like deep, soulful way. Does that make sense? In like the perspective of like having men read it. As yes. opposed to them being like, oh, this isn't me. They'd be like, this is too much. Yeah. I'm done. Like, really, the 14 chapters would be, you know, and then I've got all these pages inside every chapter. I would probably cut it down quite a bit and not make it so deep. My book is very deeply written. But women tend to like that. 
Um, but I think with men, I could still make it deep, but just different, a little bit shorter, kind of more to the point. Yeah. I don't know. I, I'm one of those people that loves seeking out new information mm-hmm. and I really need to like unpack things in order to understand them. Yeah. So Especially when you're like intrigued by a lot of things. That's why I need a guy to write it with me. See, there you yeah. go. Yeah. Yeah. That's <laughs> right. That's right. That's great. Is, uh, is Max kind of close quartered? Cause a 20 year old. Kid. Max is super deep. Oh, that's good. Yeah. Very deep, like you guys, it sounds like. But he was, I mean, basically by raised by me. Yeah. yeah. I mean, he he would, visit, you know, see his dad and spent, but not at all compared to the amount of time that, I mean, I had my kids like 98% of the time. Are your daughters more like you or more like Dan? I think we're all, we're, well, the kids and I are all very close. Um, I'd say that they're, we're all kind of the same, me and, and the kids. The kids and I are yeah. all, yeah, more like me. But I think it's because they grew up around me. You know, I was kind of their main yeah. parent. And same with Max. Max is totally me in a male version. He looks exactly like Dan. I know. <laughs> I know. He's so handsome. Well, Dan's handsome. Yeah. And uh, Max is super handsome. I think we made really cute babies. <laughs> <laughs> That's what all mothers are supposed to say, right? <laughs> yeah. I don't think I've ever heard someone be like, ah, he was kind of an ugly I know. Baby. Everybody thinks their kids are cute. But Dan is so handsome that, I mean, how could you not have, like, good looking kids? I, I, I will compliment him. You know, where compliments are due. Where credit's due, yeah. yeah. 100%. Dan's a great guy. I just had to get out of the marriage, but he's not a a bad person. No, eventually you find that crossroads of like, this isn't working. We're both not growing together anymore. Yeah, but the one thing about Dan and I we agree on is we do not like raising kids to be spoiled brats. I mean, Dan and I are very aligned with making our kids work for their money, understand that, you know, our money is our money. Um, Go work. Mm-hmm. You know, and it, it is great for the kids. They all went through college at some point or Max even just at Brewster and kind of have anxiety and be like, oh my gosh, mom, you're right. I have no money. I'm just me out in the world. Yes, you are. You know, of course we're there to support them. Right. But you really want to raise them to make sure that they they work hard and they're humble and everyone's on equal ground. And that's where Dan and I really saw eye to eye. Right. And you could probably tell like, okay, if they absolutely need money in this situation. Of course. Stuff. But like yes. there's certain times you're like, you got to, Put your foot down. Be disciplined. Yes. Yeah. Was um, I mean, we we take care of them college yeah. and all the yeah yeah. No, my parents are the same way. My mom, my mom will give me her entire bank account if I ask for it. Where my dad's like, oh, you're cut off after school. <laughs> I don't even think he knows that. Like, sometimes she'll give me money. Like if some so like last night, um, crazy story, my car got stolen. So oh my God. I I was out. Crazy night. Did play by play commentary for an MMA event in Scottsdale. All the fights fell through because none of the fighters made weight. It was kind of like an amateur event. So I'm like, oh, that's a bummer. And then one of my buddies was opening for Joe Rogan last night at oh, Stand Up yeah. Live. So I'm like, oh, I'm, I can go backstage, maybe meet Joe. By the time I got there, like, yeah, Joe just walked out. I'm like, bummer. So that's like two bummers back to back. So I'm like, all right, I'm just going to go home. Crashed for about an hour. I'm like, you know what? I'm going to go to the gym, you know, just get a workout in around midnight. I go outside. And I'm standing in my parking spot just with my keys in my hand. Like, I know I'm a little bit tired right now, but I'm pretty sure this is my spot and there's no car here. That's And awful. like, I've never had. The, I've had um, my car stolen before. Really? Because like, I can't even, because it's in a, it's like an automatic. You like press the button. Oh my God. So I'm like, how did they, and I actually have a few friends who are ex-convicts who have stolen cars before. So was, <laughs> they were the awesome. first people You're I called. Cool. <laughs> yeah. That's People I've interviewed on the podcast, so I'm just like, oh, like, hey, you guys know, they're like, oh, hell yeah, that's easy. Why? Why do you ask? I'm like, okay, so that makes sense. You're able to do that. Yeah, my car just got stolen. Wait, did did you, so you call the police? Did you find it? Found, so literally on the call with the police, put in all my information, like, oh, yep, we found it five minutes away. That's no way. That's And then I had to go pick it up at like the impound this morning. How was it on the inside? Nothing stolen. Oh, praise God. That's good. So three weeks ago, someone broke in and shattered all of my windows windows and windshields. Oh, so and somebody must have been targeting your that's car. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. So like there was someone, you know. Oh my God, my car was alert. stolen in front of my house in Miami when Dan and I were married when we played for the Heat. We lived in a gated community. That's what I was going to say. You probably had a gate. Somewhere. Yeah, I don't know how that all happened, but it was crazy. Yeah, but They I, found it. I, I got on the phone because it was like 1 a.m. I'm like, all right, called the police, got it taken care of. Should probably call my mom. And she's back in Jersey. It's like 4 a.m. I'm like, there's no way she's going to be up. But like if she hears it, it's her son, whatever. Without one, like, beep, picks up, and my sister's in the Zoom call, too. My sister's 10 months younger than me. She was at a concert in Pennsylvania that had a shooting, and two people died. Oh, God. And there was a lockdown. Oh, so God. my mom's already, like, losing That's it there. Scary. She's like, what's wrong with you? Like, why are you up at one? I'm like, my car just got stolen. Oh, my stolen. God, you guys both had a lot going on. Your poor mom could have had a heart attack. 
She, she's so, believe it or not, you're not going to remember this at all, but I do just because I got the young brain. First day I ever stepped foot in Dave Pratt's studio, Dave Pratt, Star Worldwide Networks, great guy. Um, my mom walked in while you were doing your show. You and Robin were in the main uh. studio. And my mom just like walked in. She's like, oh, this is so nice. She's just like oblivious to that kind of thing. Oh, like just so like cute. over the top, just like angel energy. So and I'm cute. just like in the video room like, mom, what are you doing? Like, I, like, oh, I, didn't, really even, I didn't even know Robin at that point. I didn't know. I know. Anything. I loved when you came. I was like, okay, I want these people. Like I want, it was you and um, what was the other guy's name that was back there? Or it was Hank. Who, Hank. You and cowboy Hank. Hat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Both of you. Beer. It was so funny because I thought. When you were there, I thought this is the guy that I wanted to like help me with my podcast. <laughs> I think I even emailed them one time about that. Yeah, yeah. Just like making clips and stuff because it really is like you need a team to do it. I agree with you, and you're like young and techy, and you like it, you enjoy it. You have a great personality, really positive. Like I yeah. always enjoyed meeting you. I'm glad to be here. Thank you. Thank you very much. Tina. Yeah, that means a lot to me. Yeah, I like being around you. Nice. <laughs> you have good energy. Yeah, it's I all love good. to hear it. Um, yeah, I mean, that's crazy. Just like my poor mother was just like, oh, I, don't, I don't know what to do. This is awful. It was my dad's birthday too. Oh so my gosh. Worry You're about that. On. Hear him snoring in the background and the, in the FaceTime. Oh, I'm like, that makes sense. It's so funny. I'll tell you never, I, I, as a parent, you're always worried. Always. Yeah. Even, I think when, you, when they get older, you worry more because you're not around them. Yeah. And what, things what, like that. What's the, like the most proud moment you had in disciplining one of your kids where you thought like they learned from this oh this god a that's a tough movie. that's a tough one you know i don't i can't recall like a certain moment but well maybe with madison there's one you know but she had called me uh when she was in college and she's and, and mackenzie has they've all made this comment even max um mom you were really strict on us and again dan was too he's a, he was we we were aligned um, you're really tough. And, you know, in high school, sometimes I'd see these other parents letting their kids drink underage and do the whole thing. And I'm so grateful that you raised me the way you did. And each one said it, Madison said it more like that. Each one said it differently and would either write letters or tell me, I think that's sort of more the proud moment because they're older. And then I'm getting the feedback from them personally, literally each one, like Max would say, you've always just tried to make me a better man by the discipline. And I'm so grateful you did because I see all these other kids and I, I like the way I am and it's because of you. And I think that's when you're really grateful because they're trying to be better people. And you're like, yeah, good. Praise God. It worked, oh, you know, yeah. but it's hard. Cause you know, you discipline your kids, you go to bed and you're like, I just lay them like, God, sometimes parenting sucks. But, um, then you realize, yeah, you did it right when they, when they come back with that feedback. Yeah. I'm really starting to realize I'm 23 going on 24, like really starting to realize like, oh man, we were brats as kids. Like when we were, were complaining about certain things, yeah. like my parents, like, you know, my dad was the disciplinarian where like my mom was kind of like always the sweet softer. with us. Like if we really did something bad, my mom would come down hard on us. But my dad was always like the tough one. Um, and at the time, you're just like, oh, why is he so mean? And then you look back, I'm like, oh, yeah, of course. Yeah. You were awful. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I know, we all. I mean, kids, it's tough. It's hard. Right? And kids are, they can be, you know, they don't get it yet. It's all good. You obviously have good parents. I really do. I attribute a lot of that. To, I mean, there's a lot of great people that come out of really difficult households. But, I mean, for the most part, you can't give what you don't have, right? Yeah. So, as parents, obviously, you have good people for parents. So, that's wonderful. And where were you raised? You know, I was born in Philadelphia, but we moved to Arizona when I was really young. Really? So I, I was raised here, went to ASU, and that's when I met Dan. He was playing for the Suns, and I was at ASU. Uh -huh. In college, wow, yeah. okay. Yeah, I, we got married, I was still in college. So you love living here? You know, I love Arizona. Um, I did just get a little place out in Brentwood, up near LA, just because I know people out there and I like it. Yeah. You know, I don't think it's a place I'd reside long term. I, I like like Nashville, like Texas, I like uh, Florida, I like a lot of places. But mm -hmm. um, I went there, I, you know, for the summer, and um, it, it's just nice to get away. But, you know, it's just so funny because I was just telling a, a friend of mine that um, I'm really open to wherever I'm led now, that I'm an empty nester and I can really be anywhere. Yeah. And I think for a long time I was really closed off because I've had some bad experiences, like in relationships and things, and I, my picker is just sometimes kind of off. And so then I got like closed off, but I've gotten to the point where I'm very open, um, ready to, to de start dating. And I'm also ready to just be, 
you know, just to receive and see, um, to be open about where my life's going to go, really not be close minded or um, not hyper fixated on what I, you know, you know, rigid about what I feel like it should be, you no, know, I'm really yeah. at this place now. And I don't know if it's part of getting older, I would hope more young people can feel like that. Oh, yeah. And it's tough, too. Like, I've gone through parts where it's like, oh, everything's got to be, you want to be a perfectionist and things don't work out the way you want to. And then when you kind of, like, let go of that and just be like, it is what it is. Life's going to happen the way it's going to happen. And things start to formulate. And, like, okay, those are kind of, like, the best moments of your life, like, the best time periods when you really don't give two shits about what's going on. It's true, And joy. then everything kind of, like, falls into place. And then eventually the more you live, the more you get back into a certain mindset, unfortunately. You yep. just got kind of have to watch it, you know? Yep. Let yep. it teeter a little bit, but like that's it, it's very difficult, especially when it comes to dating. Like, like I said, I lived with five females last year. Some are like they know what they want. Others are just like dating around. Like it's a lot, a lot, and none of the guys are good Ugh. either. Yeah, I was never much of a dater. Maybe that was part of my problem. <laughs> I, I don't think I that's a, a problem at all. I don't know. I think I was a little naive. So, I mean, Dan, I think I chose well. I think he's like I said, he's a great person. Um, but there, I've had some bad pickings, and I think it's because I. I, I didn't really date a lot. I, you know, I got married young, yeah. you know? So I've kind of learned all that stuff later in life. I've, everybody has their gifts and everybody has, you know, their deficits and, you know, we're all just growing. And I think that was an area I had to grow up is really understanding how to have discernment on what makes a good partner. That's interesting. That's stuff I got to learn. I was always like, it's hard. you know, when I find someone I connect with, it, it'll That's, happen, you know? Like, I don't date around where, like, some of my friends are like, oh, you got to meet so-and-so. I'm like, I don't know them, you know? Yeah, I'm, I'm tough I'm it. tough to date. Like, I don't jump into things easily at all. But now I'm, I, and I still won't, but now I'm definitely open to meeting people, which is interesting because now I'm meeting people and it's been fun. But, um yeah, that's interesting. When you were talking about like just life happening and, and accepting it, I kind of feel like that's part of being truly joyful. Like people chase happiness. It's never going to work. You have to cultivate it. And that's part of cultivating it is just really being grateful for where you are. And, you know, a lot of people are very grateful when things go their way. And they're like, I'm so grateful I got this job. But when you're grateful when things don't go your way and you find the gratitude and give thanks to whatever it is, God, Buddha, whatever it is you want in the universe, mm -hmm. when you can give thanks in, in really difficult times, you find gratitude in the most difficult moments. That's true joy. That's true yeah. happiness. That's truly cultivating a joyful um, self and a joyful life. So very difficult to have, too, unless you have, like, I feel like you have to go through a ton. And I think on some level, like, you're talking about drama before we came on, too. Yeah. Just, like, some people look at that, like, legitimate, have went through traumatic events, and they've come out the other side, you know, for better or for worse. Where there's other people who just, like... they stuck in the pain. It's just, like, I don't... Yeah, and then also people that just, I don't think what they're going through is that bad, but they make it seem like it's 10 times worse because they really haven't gone through anything that bad. Yeah, they're catastrophizing it, right? Yeah. That people do do that, and that's that's tough, but you know, sometimes you just don't understand where they're wired. Like you said, like they haven't grown enough maybe, and so that's part of their journey, and they'll come through stronger, and then they probably won't be doing that as much. They won't be making like tens out of twos as much, but really it's all subjective, right? So you can't say that someone's, trauma or their experiences to you might not because you're probably stronger and to them it's you it's sort of like catastrophizing to you but to them it's really really difficult because they don't have that capacity yet yeah so it's hard for them um but you're blessed because you you definitely have more mental fortitude and not everybody has that but they grow the yeah. more that they go through life with those instances then they're like wait a minute and that's resiliency yep. that's exactly what being resilient is you come through it and you're like wait a minute I got through that. And then the next thing might be more difficult than that one, but they handle it better. So it's all just, you know, part of growth. And it's really part of understanding resiliency. That's also a part of joy. Like people have to do mind work. Like I, I've been a, I've been a fan of it since I was 18. I read Marianne Williamson's book, A Return to Love. That was my first one. And then I read The Road Less Traveled. Those are all the kind of books I read as a young girl. I never really liked to read novels, mm -hmm. but I like growing and I like seeking out, you know, how to cultivate a better life and a better mindset because I mean, nobody really grows up perfect, right? Right. And um, then we get downloaded all this programming into our brain by our parents and by, you know, just everything that we're around. And it can kind of screw you up, uh, you know, in a way. And so you kind of kind of put yourself back together. And part of that's doing the work. How difficult is that as a parent now, knowing that like your kids are going to develop their own mindsets and realize like, I love you, mom and dad, but like, 
you don't know everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I kind of think they said that more young, and now they're like, really? Mom, you really did know what you were talking about. <laughs> the exact but, opposite. But the funny thing is, um, I think regarding that, yeah, no, their life wasn't perfect. Listen, I left their father, you know, and I have a lot of guilt over that. And yeah. there were so many times I thought, oh my gosh, if I would have just stayed, maybe this wouldn't have happened, or maybe this... Because you never know, like, every choice you make puts you on a path. And... You know, sometimes something bad happens, like my son got hurt or other things happened to my daughter almost lost her foot. And you think, well, if I was still married, this wouldn't have happened because she wouldn't have been in this yard or, you know what I mean? And you can make yourself crazy thinking um, that maybe you hurt your kids mentally by the choice you made by filing for divorce. But um, again, I've raised them to seek out the blessing and um, understand that we're exactly where we're supposed to be at every moment and find the joy and the gratitude in that and the peace in that. And I feel like that also gives grace to the way or any mistakes I made as a parent. Mm. And it kind of like offers grace to them to have that mindset. Was that the toughest thing you feel like you've went through with them when it comes to like feeling any shame or guilt? The divorce? Yeah. Um, divorcing Dan, no, it was, I mean, there was time, there's times that you feel bad. Not now. Like Madison will say it was, mom, you did the right thing. I mean, I love where I am today. I love who I am. And I'm not sure that would have happened. Um, because, you know, sometimes the household could be very um, unhealthy and I really wanted the kids to be raised something different. Um, so I don't I don't know, but I do think that there was other choices I've made that um, were very traumatic. Take any of those experiences when like, because again, I feel like you can't really get involved as a parent too much, like your kids got to learn. But like when they're in relationships yes. too, you look at like, oh, he's not good for her. She's not good for him. Like, how, yes. did, you, did you date at all growing up? Like when you were a teenager before? I didn't. That that's all? why I'm saying I was very naive. I had to learn a lot about dating as an older woman. Right. Yeah. And about, but with regards to my kids, it's so funny you say that because you know, my oldest is engaged, Madison. I, I, I probably shouldn't say this. I might have a strange feeling Mackenzie's going to be engaged. I don't know anything, but it's just, they're very close and it's yeah. beautiful. And I'm just so grateful as well for both those two. Um, but Madison had a really good boyfriend um, before this one. He was just great. Yeah. Salt of the earth. But I knew it wasn't right, but I would never say that. So I would just ask a lot of questions. Really? And she majored in psychology. And so, I mean, she works in tech, but she she's, does a lot of self, self-help self as well. Like, she's really into it. So she knew what I was getting at by ans- asking the questions. And after they broke up, she said, yeah, I'm, I, I'm so glad you just asked questions. You never told me what you thought. And I got her to think. And so they did end the relationship on a very good note, I, this kid is a doll and his family's amazing and they're just beautiful people. I could just tell it wasn't going to be right and she knew. And then she ended up with somebody that she said, Mom, you, you know, everything you asked me, you did for a reason and I, it wasn't the right person. This is the right person. And she's engaged to an incredible human as well. Praise God. Like she's met and had good, good experiences. But um, yeah, as a mom, it's really difficult. And then Mackenzie would be in relationships that Kenzie's a lot like me where she could get herself into something where um, she's a total giver and can get really hurt. And, um, now she's in a relationship where it's very healthy. Like it's all about like Madison's relationship about communicating about, you know, not just serving the, yourself, but serving the other person and communicating through that. What a blessing. I'm just so grateful. Whew. It's tough. It's tough. That's actually a really good parenting tactic to ask questions, but not like blatantly say, like, I don't know. I don't know about this one. Yeah, I would ask a lot of questions for both with both. And how, how can you tell that it's just not right? I've had you, just what I've been this this second person that, you know, I gave this money to that really um, it was just a bad situation. It was just a, a horrible relationship. Um, I think it really taught me a lot, like I said, like at an older age. And so now I kind of look at um kind of red flags, you know, that I never understood were something to look at, you know, at a younger age. Um, and I see them. And so then I just ask questions. That's good. Yeah. And I ask questions about the positive things and I just get their mind thinking and it's good for them to think, mm-hmm. you know, cause it's about them, not me just asking. So I love like surrounding myself with people that love to ask questions and actually like not like go out of their way to dig into your personal life but you know ask sincere compelling questions of, okay you actually care about this as opposed to just like going hey how's it going man oh, i'm fine how are you because you have like so many of those people too or just you, you know when it's just like chit chat as opposed to like deep conversation with the right people and that good stuff it really is yeah like it really fulfills the soul 100 as opposed to just like knowing like that was a very unfulfilling conversation 
It's true human connection, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, vulnerability, transparency, it's the road to connection and um and and we need connection. We're supposed to be connected with one another, right? So that's why it's, it feels so good. Did you have a good um, relationship with your mother and father? Oh, yes, yes. That's good. You know, actually, my dad growing up was a little bit tough. <laughs> uh, not on me. <laughs> not on us like his kids. So he was just a very, like, back east kind of guy, but funny as well and um, really grew into himself uh, as a grandfather. Incredible man. Incredible grandfather. My mom, uh, my stepdad I love. Um, he's incredible as well. Uh, my mom and I talk probably, oh God, we talk every day. And my kids and I talk every day. Like Madison calls me when she's in San Francisco, she'll call me every morning on her walk and we'll have a talk. And uh, Mackenzie, I mean, they all call me every day. Me, I mean, Max, even Max. Yeah. That's really good. It's wonderful. I'm very grateful. God's given me such a beautiful relationship with my kids. Like I am very, very grateful. Not everybody has everything perfect in life, but um, you know, I see where my, my perfect areas are, and I really appreciate them. Absolutely, yeah. Tina. And moving forward, when it comes to um, obviously everything you got going in your life, as well as your kids' lives, like what do you see? Like what's kind of like? And again, you can't control things, yeah. but like what's your My ideal? Future plan looking. for you, your kids. Yeah. Your so, life. well, I'm. I just finished my um, conference that I'll be doing for Soul of a Woman, yeah. and so I'll be putting on my first conference. I really want to just kind of dive in and and do conferences and um, teach my program, and um, for my kids, you know, they're just going to live their life. Um, we're all kind of, a couple of us are like, where are we all going to end up? We all have to end up close to each other. So we're trying to <laughs> communicate about that, but it's hard because some of them are still, you know, college. So, um, but for me, it's, uh, working on soul of a woman, um, really building that and being open now to date and kind of see where my life goes. If I end up with somebody, I, I think, I think I would, I think I would get married again and, mm-hmm. and, um, write that book with that gut person maybe yeah. I don't know you never know maybe not um but for me it's really about my conferences that's what I'm focused on right now um enjoying being an empty nester I mean a lot of women I think get really depressed about it I'm thrilled because you know I have all this time and I like to be busy so now I get to be busy with something different so and I'd love to do a podcast with you I'm down I'm not kidding I'm like for it. I love talking to people and connecting and you're like fun and young and I'm not <laughs> So you have what I don't have, but I have what you you. don't have. No, I'm just kidding. We're both fun in completely different ways. You know, it's good. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm getting older. And like, I first was like kind of afraid to get older. I'm like, I'm liking it now. Age is just a number. You know what? I just, I love it. I love like, I love it. It's fun. It's good. But I would love to do some work with you in the future. I'd love to. Anytime. We definitely should do that. I hope we were able to do some work in the future. I, this, no, we need to talk about that for sure. Because I've been focusing a lot more on the business aspect and partnership building on this show the last few months, basically the entire summer. So I haven't really gotten the chance to sit down and do too many interviews. This was probably one of my favorites. Really? Yeah. Oh my God. This was fun. This was oh, easy. You're so cute. Thank you. Thank you very much for coming on. Let's so, do yeah. another one. Maybe we'll do one another time on a different topic. Yeah. It's like not more what? about me, like something else. Yeah. And I also know that you don't really talk about yourself a lot on podcasts. So hopefully I didn't dig too deep. No, I know. Anything. I try not. I just don't want to, I mean... I think it's important. It's help, it helps people relate to me, especially with a book out. I appreciate you doing it in a way that made me feel comfortable, first of all. Um, otherwise, I wouldn't have done it. Yeah. And it's all a positive. I mean, I think whatever I've shared, I always try to share it in a good way because I do have good feelings toward the people that, you know, we just we talked about. But I do think it's good for me to do it. I mean, I have a book out, yeah, you know, absolutely. and I'm going to be doing a conference and I'm a very open book. I'm very transparent. I'm happy to talk about my life, but don't ask me to... Um, disparage someone that I'm not going to disparage. And and that's, that's not what you're about. Yeah. You're awesome. That's John Jay and Rich are the same way. They're amazing. And I felt comfortable with them as well. And you can get a uh, soul of a woman on Amazon. Yeah. Amazon. I have my link on my Instagram. It's I put on Barnes and Noble. I've been kind of working with them a little bit more lately. And so I might do some um, little stops and book signings. And so Go to Barnes & Noble. Make them happy, please. Go to Barnes & Noble. Soul of a Woman by Tina Marley. Get the book now. Um, at Tina Marley on Instagram? Uh, yeah, media. Tina Marley on Instagram. At M-A- Tina Marley. M-A-J-E-R-L-E for those of you who do not know. Spelled different. It's tough. It's tough sometimes. But this was episode 531 of the podcast. Again, we're presented by TickPick. Use TickPick whenever you get the chance. If some way, somehow, one of these years, you just can't get tickets anymore. No, I'm a TickPick fan. Let me tell you. No hidden fees. I'm all about TickPick. I got you. And you got to get them. 
Thank you very much. <laughs> and then uh, versusgame.com. We got a lot of things coming up with them soon. Uh, check out First Form as well. Great supplement line, um, oh. protein, uh, amino acids, oh. testosterone, all that stuff. Um, based in St. Louis, Missouri. Shout out to my guys at First Form. Uh, but Tina, again, thanks so much for coming on. Thanks so much mm-hmm. to AZ Pod Studio as well. First time I've ever used this place. We're going to be using this place uh, moving forward. For I sure. like this place. Thanks to Martin and the gang. Uh, but this was episode 531 of the podcast. Check it out.